Hi, I'm Raven, and... Ah! Raven, help me! My eyes are on fire! That's my sister. I told you not to play with the soap, Regina! I'm only nine years old, but my baby sister makes me feel like her parent, since she's always getting herself into trouble. And if I don't help her, then who will? Since mom is always so busy. Raven? <laughs> Regina? You're going to be late for school. Let me introduce myself properly. I am Raven, and I am from New York. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, back to my story. Growing up, I learned to be the responsible big sister. Regina <laughs> is three years younger than me, and we both live with our mom, who works extremely hard as a real estate agent. Besides mom being busy, Regina has always been such a difficult child. Mommy, my clothes are all messed up. Oh, Regina, why can't you be more responsible like your sister? The bus will be here any moment now. Raven, please help. I didn't mind helping mom out with my sister, but as I helped her change into a clean t-shirt, she suddenly bit my hand. Ow! Regina, why did you do that? Oh, I'm sorry, Raven. I didn't mean to bite you. I was feeling a little hungry and it just happened. Is that a bus I hear? Hurry up, Raven. We're going to be late. At school, I was a top student and a role model to all my classmates. Well done once again to Raven, who scored full marks on the test. Everyone else failed. Oh, aren't you so perfect, geek? Oh, don't sulk too much. You might just melt and turn exactly into your result, which is a big, fat zero. Kids were jealous of me all the time, but I never focused on that much. I stuck to my goals and enjoyed the results. Mom would be so proud. And when I was around 16 and showed mom my top achievement award, Regina suddenly screamed. Ah! What's wrong? What happened? Oh, I thought I saw a rat or maybe a snake, but it's just my eyes playing games. What's for dinner? I'm hungry. Hmm. Can I see your report card? Regina's report card looked like a hot dookie. And mom was not very pleased when she saw her results. You failed. Again? I'll try harder next term. I never see you studying. You are always watching TV or playing video games. From now onwards, you will study with your sister. I was so surprised by what Regina did next. She got up and toppled the table and chairs upside down with so much rage. I'm so sick and tired of you and your perfect daughter, Raven. I'm not Raven, Mom. After Regina left the kitchen like a beast, Mom started crying and I comforted her. And then later that evening, when we sat down for dinner, mom had something important to tell us. The summer holidays are coming up, but unfortunately my boss needs me to attend some urgent business in Chicago. So are we getting a sitter? No, I have no choice but to send you to your Aunt Maggie's house. Aunt Maggie's, yay! I, however, was not happy in the least. Aunt Maggie was just like Regina, a ruthless devil. When we arrived at Aunt Maggie's house, she was already waiting on the porch. Regina got out of the car and ran to her like she was just freed from prison. And Aunt Maggie <laughs> caught her with her arms wide open. Auntie Maggie, I missed you. I have missed you as well, my Regina boo. Look how much you have grown. Come on in, you must be thirsty. Mom and I were left standing outside to carry in all the bags. As we entered the living room, it was like walking through a freaking kaleidoscope. All the bright colors almost blinded me for a moment. Aunt Maggie was helping mom with our bags. Thank you for taking care of the girls. You can handle this, right? Aunt Maggie ignored mom's question and rushed toward the kitchen because there was a loud crashing sound. Maggie, are you sure you can handle this? Relax as I can. Enjoy your holiday. Okay, bye girls. Please behave. The next day, Aunt Maggie wanted to take us out for an early lunch, but I wasn't feeling so well. Raven, we're starving. Hurry up. It's fine, go on without me. I decided to stay in bed the whole day, hoping to feel better. And then there was this loud rattling sound. Being alone never scared me, but suddenly I felt a chill. And when I tried to fall asleep, bing, there was that sound again. Aunt Maggie, Regina, is that you? Regina, you can cut it out now. You have my attention. Secretly, I hoped that it was Regina and her attention-seeking nature, but it was not. I slowly got up from under the blankets 
and bravely went to face whatever it was. Hello? Anyone there? When the noise stopped, I relaxed a little. But when I looked inside my aunt's room, something was in there, shuffling around, and I raced back to my room. I stayed under my blanket with the torch on for hours. It was night now, and Aunt Maggie and Regina weren't back yet. But I was dog-tired, and my eyelids felt like lead, so I let myself fall asleep. The next morning, I woke up startled as Aunt Maggie started shouting from the kitchen. Regina, Raven, come on, sleepyheads, breakfast is served. I didn't hear you come in last night. I'm sorry, Raven, I had some car trouble. How are you feeling? Did you sleep well? I decided I needed to just come out with it and tell Aunt Maggie what I thought. I think there is a ghost in your room, Aunt Maggie. Aunt Maggie and Regina burst out into hysterical laughter. I felt like a fool for saying what I thought. <laughs> That's the most, That's the most funniest, funniest thing. thing. Jinx, you owe me a soda. Raven, there are no ghosts here. I scared them all the way when I moved back in after my carnival days. Oh, and that reminds me, we're going out tonight to the... Carnival! And I am going to throw in a corn dog with that soda, Regina Boo. Woohoo! Since no one believed me about the ghost, I was going to stock up on torch batteries. There was no way I was going to fall asleep in this house without my torch. All right, now let's talk about what we're wearing tonight. This is what I'll be wearing, and I have matching outfits for you both. How exciting! There was no way Regina or I was ever going to wear duck costumes to a carnival, so I came up with an excuse for the both of us. Regina and I have, like, severe skin allergies, so I don't think that's the brightest idea. Okay then, more fun for me then. <laughs> it felt good to be out and about, but Aunt Maggie was so into her ducks that she spoke about them all the way to the carnival. All right, girls, my duck show is about to begin. I need to get to the ducks. I saved you front row seats. Thanks, Aunt Maggie, but I would rather go on some carnival rides. All right, all right, you can go, but only if you promise to stick with your sister. Great, now I felt like one of Aunt Maggie's ducks. Yes, Aunt Maggie, I promise. Then Aunt Maggie handed Regina some money and Regina made a mad dash toward the carnival rides. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't see her. Regina, Regina, where are you? When I spotted her, she was heading toward the lake with a boy. Was this Regina's plan all along? to ditch me for a boy? I called out to Regina, but she just ignored me and got into a boat with this boy. When I got down to where the boats were docked, I got into one and rowed frantically. And when I caught up to them, I shouted to Regina. Regina, get into my boat now. We are heading back to shore. Not a chance, fart face. I am so going to wring your neck after this, you selfish brat. Suddenly, their boat was hit by something. And then again, the second time made the boat topple over, and Regina and the boy went in the water. Then I saw it. It was a crocodile, and it was heading for Regina. The stupid boy she was with just left her. Regina, grab onto the paddle. We got onto shore safely, and then Regina got out of the boat and bolted toward that very same boy. How could you just leave me to be eaten by a crocodile, you jerk? As she was arguing with her boyfriend she met 15 minutes ago, this other girl shoved Regina. Hey, why are you yelling at my brother, you freakazoid? Your brother left my sister to be eaten by crocodiles! My dad is the chief sheriff of this town, and if he finds out that you two newbies are trouble, we'll deport you back from whichever monkey land you came from. Well, looks like you and your brother are the biggest monkeys of this town! With that, I took Regina's hand and walked off. Later that night, while I was in the room watching Storytime Animated, Regina sat down quietly next to me. Thank you for standing up for me like that. I've always stood up for you, Regina, but you just never notice, since you're always so angry at me and mom. You're better than me at everything, so I just hated myself for not being like you. Regina, there are so many beautiful things about you, and you have to love yourself first, and then you'll see the difference. While Regina and I were having a moment of sisterhood, Aunt Maggie came barging into the room. What you girls did tonight was not funny. We never said that it was. 
Regina could have been hurt, but... Regina is fine. But I'll tell you who isn't. Georgina. Who the heck is Georgina? Georgina is the girl you hurt. I am dating her dad, and you need to apologize to her tomorrow. If you're talking about the tall girl with the long nose, then she needs to apologize to us and her dense brother. Her name is Georgina, and I won't have you back-chatting me in my house, young lady. The next day, Aunt Maggie had a barbecue, and Georgina, the mean girl from the carnival, glared at us scornfully and then put on a fake smile. So girls, Mike and I are soon to be married, which means he has family and so is Georgina and Garth. So I need you all to get along. My brother and I have always been the good kids on the block. We won't let you down, Maggie. When Aunt Maggie went out to get some ice with her future husband, Georgina turned into the evil devil that she really was. Now listen here, you buffoons. As long as you are in my town, you will do what I say. Now pour me more soda. It's freaking 100 degrees out here. Regina and I smiled at each other, took two cans of soda, and dropped them on her long black hair. <laughs> er, what did you do? I just got my hair done at the salon. You said it was 100 degrees, so we cooled you off. <laughs> Georgina charged after us like a wildcat, and then she went totally bonkers and threw down the barbecue grill, burning half of Aunt Maggie's plants and lettuce, which she feeds to her ducks. Georgina, what have you done? Right then, Aunt Maggie stepped in, and Georgina started crying dramatically. Oh, Maggie, your nieces were so horrible to me. Just look at how they ruined your beautiful garden. Aunt Maggie! Enough! Aunt Maggie looked at us with so much rage, and Georgina's brother, who saw everything, remained quiet like a fool. I have had enough of you two! I'm calling your mother! Things were so awkward at my aunt's house after that. Mom arrived late the next day, and we were relieved to be going home. After a few years, I completed school and began studying medicine, and soon it was time for Regina's prom. I think the up style will suit the dress you'll be wearing. I think you're right. As Regina and I were trying to figure out her hairstyle, Mom came in. You look beautiful, Regina. Thanks, Mom. She suddenly started tearing up. What's wrong? I'm just so proud of you girls, the both of you. Aww. The school hall looked amazing. I almost forgot that we were at prom. It really felt like a winter ball. Regina looked stunning. Her dress was perfect. I could see Regina and David dancing together. They looked so good together. But then, I saw Regina stop all of a sudden, and she was shouting at someone next to David. Hey, what are you doing? I rushed over to where Regina was. She was covered in punch and shouting at the waitress. Look at me, it's ruined. My hair. My dress? Couldn't you watch where you're going? I turned to look at the waitress, and I almost fainted when I saw her. This was no accident. Let's call it payback. I couldn't believe what Georgina did. I pushed Regina out of the way, and I was about to school Georgia about real payback. But just then, Mom and the school principal grabbed onto me and didn't let go. Raven, don't. She just isn't worth it. Look at what she did to Regina, Mom! She ruined her night! Georgina deserves what's coming! Well, you girls ruined my life! We can't take credit for that! Your life sucked way before we visited your crackpot town! After your mom fetched you, your crazy aunt decided to steal my dad and move away. I haven't seen my dad since. I found out where you lived and planned how I was going to get back at you. No, Regina, let's go. But sis, she ruined my night! And by walking away... We make sure she doesn't ruin anything more. Georgina was fired and soon after moved back to her hometown. We never saw her again. Regina wasn't crowned prom queen. I didn't care though. And quite surprisingly, neither did Regina. That night was soon a fading memory. Instead of giving in to Georgina's misguided vengeance, I broke free and am now able to tell others that vengeance doesn't pay. Hi, my name is Jasmine, and this is my best friend, Emma. If you want to find out why we are hiding here, make sure you stick till the end of my story. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Growing up in a desert was fun. Everyone praised me for the unique blue-green color of my eyes. But I didn't care about that. I was always a more outdoorsy type. Out of all the kids on our campsite, I could build the tallest sandcastle, and all the other kids would have a blast kicking it down. 
that was the fun part. While I was this fun, popular kid, there was this one day that really made my blood boil, where I saw a shy girl sitting by herself, and then two other boys <laughs> threw sand all over her hair, so I went to her rescue. Hey, what is wrong with you rugrats? Leave us alone, Jasmine, or we will dig a hole and put you in it. Oh yeah? I dare you. The boys looked into my fierce eyes and then changed their minds because they knew how crazy I could get. And then the shy girl softly touched my shoulder. Whoa, you're like a superhero. Thank you. What's your name? Emma. I looked at her sweet smile and knew that she was one friend I was going to keep for the rest of my life. We instantly became besties. And I taught Emma how to climb trees, catch scorpions, and we used to throw stones at all the mean boys. But then there was this one time when I accidentally hit her older brother, and when Emma took me to her house to apologize to him, her mother was there and she did not look too happy. Are you the girl that hurt my son? I'm sorry, miss. It was an accident. <sighs> Where are your parents? They are at work. My dad is a mine worker and my mom is a nurse. Hmm. A modern family. I hate those. Emma, you will no longer be friends with this girl. I was so shocked and Emma just stood quietly looking to the ground. Why can't she be my friend? Because I don't want her to become a wild barbarian like you. Now please leave my house. I looked at her sternly and left. The next day when I saw Emma at school, she smiled at me from a distance, and then I approached her. Jasmine, we can't be seen together. Once my mother finds out, she will stop me from coming to school. Why is your mom like this? She just has her own set of beliefs on how a girl should be. Well, if we can't be friends in school, we can still be friends after school when no one can see us. Emma agreed, and after school, we ran off to her favorite play area next to the swings. But this time, the unthinkable happened. While we were sprinting, Emma misstepped on a patchy spot of sand. And suddenly, before I could blink, she started sinking like a stone. Jasmine, what's going on? It's quicksand. Hold on, I'm coming. I ran looking for a long branch, and when I got back, Emma was already halfway down. I needed to act fast, or this was going to be the last time I would ever see Emma again. Jasmine, help! Grab onto the branch. I can't reach it! I had no idea what to do, because if I got any closer, then I would start sinking. So I ran back to the campsite and fetched my father. And when we got back, we could only see Emma's head. Oh no, we're too late! Dad quickly tied his rope around a rock and went in and pulled her out. She started aggressively coughing out sand. To make things worse, when we arrived at Emma's house, her menace of a mom had already blamed me for everything. From now on, Emma will be homeschooled so she can be as far away from your rebellious daughter as possible. My daughter is not rebellious, and this was not her fault. Yes, it was. Now please tell your daughter to stay away from mine. Dad took me away, and later that night, while I was sleeping in my tent, I heard a Jasmine. voice calling for me. It was Emma. I'm sorry about how my mom treated you and your dad. Even though we can't see each other, I'll place a letter every day under a rock next to the well to tell you about my days, and you can do the same. That way, we'll never lose contact. Wow, that's a brilliant idea, Emma. I'm gonna really miss playing with you. Emma and I kept in touch for years after that. And this one time when I saw her at the shopping plaza buying vegetables with her mom, she waved at me, and of course her bratty mom held her hand down and gave me an evil smirk. She then proceeded to talk to the shopkeeper. I think that girl is a thief. I saw her putting something in her pocket. The shopkeeper immediately called the guards on me and had me taken out of the shop. My dad will hear about this and close your shop down. I waited for Emma and her mother to come out, and when I saw them, I approached her mother. What is wrong with you, lady? My mother always sends me here to buy my vegetables. Well, your mother should put a leash on you, since you just can't leave my daughter alone. We are teenagers now, and I think she's old enough to choose her own friends. Well, lucky for her, she's getting married next year. I was shocked at what Emma's mom said, because after school, Emma and I already had plans to leave the desert life and live in the city. And now her mom was standing in our way. I waited for her to leave me a letter, but she stopped writing to me. And one day, when I saw her collecting water from the well, I approached her. Emma, I haven't heard from you for ages. What happened? Yes, my mom found out about the letters. Jasmine, I'm so scared. I don't want to get married. I can help you if you let me. Emma agreed one day after school and the day before she was going to get married to some loser her mother chose. I collected some food and water in a bag, got my camel ready, wrote a letter to my parents and left. <laughs> Emma waited for me at the well as we had planned and off we went traveling on a camel late at night. Are you sure about this, Jasmine? Absolutely. I can't let you get married to someone you don't even like. We are going to the city to live like superstars. But how? 
Trust me, we are going to be just fine. As we rode through the sand dunes, the camel started slowing down, so we had to let it rest for a while. I put up a small tent for us to sleep in, and before we could go to bed, we saw masked men on camels riding not too far from us. Oh no, those are my uncles. My mom must have sent them. We quickly packed up, but the camel was too exhausted to get up, so we left it and ran towards a mountain where we hid in a cave and ended up falling asleep. The next morning, the sun was scorching hot and our water had run out. And then we noticed a truck parked next to a cactus plant. And there was a man who looked like he fell asleep in the driver's seat. Hey, these are the trucks that go into the city. Come on. Jasmine, wait. What if it's dangerous? We can hide in the back. I pulled Emma. We quickly jumped into the back of the truck and hid inside some sacks. My heart was pounding with half excitement and half terror. The truck started and off we went through a rocky journey all the way to the city. When the truck eventually stopped, we peeked out of the sack and saw cars and people dressed in nice clothes. So we jumped out and then suddenly a taxi came racing towards us and almost knocked us down. But we managed to move away with our hearts throbbing. Oh my gosh, Jasmine, we made it! Yes, we did. We are in the city. We looked around us and this was our dream come true. I could hear Emma's stomach rumbling and I looked in my bag and we were out of food. I didn't have a plan and that was a big problem. So what now? Um, well, look, there's a place where people are eating. We stood by the glass window looking at everyone eating and then a man in a white suit spotted us from inside. I don't have any money. What? Jasmine, I thought you had this all planned out. Well, I... While I was thinking about what to say, the man with the white suit stood in front of us. Hi there, ladies. Do you want to join us? No, thank you. What? But we're hungry. We don't know this man. We can't just trust him. Yes, she's right. You can't trust anyone. My name is Jeff, and I run a modeling agency, and you are exactly what we're looking for, for our new perfume brand. Jeff cupped his hands around my face. I never saw myself as a pretty girl or a model. The only thing nice about my face were my light blue-green eyes. Okay, so you want me to model for you? Not for me, for the brand. You're going to be a famous girl. Now this was a dream come true, and it happened just on time. Jeff booked a hotel for us, and we went wild, jumping on the white clean bed, and I took a bath like five times in the huge basin that looked like a swimming pool. Growing up in the desert, we did have some knowledge of how people lived in the city, but we only read about it and never really experienced it. Wow, this is amazing. Emma and I sat out on the balcony and gazed up at the stars. I turned to her and was happy to see her smile again. I missed that smile of yours. She blushed and then she yawned. It was time for bed. Jasmine, thank you for letting me see all this. Thank you for coming with me. We fell asleep and the next day was a complete nightmare. I did the perfume shoot and when I got back to the hotel, Emma was gone. And then I saw a note under my pillow. My uncles found me. Please just let it be. Don't come back for me. Live your life. I sat down crying for a while because I really wanted her to be free from her mother and her jail cell life. I continued doing more and more shoots and eventually I became a very famous model. I bought a house and then I started thinking of my parents and Emma. Life was great in the city, but I felt so lonely, so I decided to visit the desert. When I went home, mom and dad were happy to see me, but they were also upset with me. Why didn't you just tell us that you wanted to live in the city? We would have let you go. I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry, mom. I was helping a friend out and I kind of forgot about your feelings. I'm so sorry. I hugged them and they forgave me. And then I asked about Emma and mom told me that she was married and told me where she lived. It was a little sad to hear that, but I couldn't wait to see her. And when I found her the next day, she hugged me tightly. Jasmine, I missed you so much. It's been a whole year now. Yeah, I'm pretty famous in the city now. I'm sure you are. You've always been so brave. And then her mother appeared. You again? What are you doing here? I came to see my best friend. Please leave! We don't want you here! I'm no longer a child and neither is Emma. Her mother smiled at me wickedly and then she called for Emma's husband who was a tall, butch man. Javid, please show this pest of a girl the way out. Before I go, could you at least tell me why you hate me so much? Because you are a modern girl who would have been a bad influence to my Emma. But thank goodness I stopped that from happening. Look, now she's married while you are living a loose life in the city. Mom, that's enough! Emma, please leave before things get complicated. I looked at Emma's sad eyes and walked away. I decided to finally let Emma's mother win. But the next day, just before I could go back to the city in my Jeep, I saw Emma's husband holding another woman. I fumed up and faced him. 
Hey, what are you doing with this woman when you're married to my best friend? Leave me alone and mind your own business, girl. He went on to kiss the lady in front of me. I had seen enough and pushed him to the ground. His little minion pounced on me and everyone stood in a circle looking at us as we rolled on the sandy floor. Jasmine? I heard Emma's voice and stood up. Emma, your husband was with this woman. Emma looked at the woman who had her arm on Javid's shoulder, and then suddenly Emma's mother came running. What's going on here? Someone told me that your friend Jasmine attacked Javid. Mom, look at what you made me marry. Emma's mother saw the husband with the other woman, and he was smiling like it was okay, until Emma and her mother took off their shoe and started giving him the famous desert shoe beatdown. After that, Emma's mom approached me. I'm sorry. I tried so hard to keep my daughter away from you. All because I didn't want her to be like you. Free and so smart. I was wrong. I'm a bad mother. Emma hugged her mom and I forgave her. Then Emma came back with me to the city so we could live our dreams together. I thought the surprises were over, but one day, as we sat outside the yard looking at the stars, I looked at Emma and held her hand. And then she leaned closer and kissed me. I had been waiting for this moment all my life, since I fell in love with Emma the very first day I saw her. Wow, I didn't know you felt the same way. Hmm, I guess I was just waiting for the right moment. I love you, Emma. I love you too, Jasmine. Woo! Turn up the music. We all got lit as the music got louder, and the party got crazier. I was dancing my butt off when suddenly a waiter tripped over and caviar covered me in head to toe. There was even some caviar in my nostrils. Ugh, watch where you're going! I'm so sorry, sir. Suddenly everyone started laughing and pointing at me. I was so embarrassed. I turned to my girlfriend, Siri, for help. Babe, please help me clean up. What? Are you kidding? I'm not getting anywhere near you. You reek of fish eggs. But... Siri got up and walked away, leaving me all alone. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Marlo, and I'm from Italy. Make sure you like and subscribe. My mother came from nothing, but she was a very smart woman, and managed to become a billionaire by the time she was 30. When I graduated from high school, my mom sat me down and asked me what I wanted my career to be. Um, an actor? Done. The next day, she booked me in a movie alongside Brad Pitt. I soon became a very famous actor. It was too easy. All the girls were obsessed with me, and I was living the dream life. I loved the parties, the food, the servants who did my bidding. I was happy with my life with Siri, my billionaire girlfriend. But as I stood there now, covered in caviar, I realized that no one here truly cared about me. All they cared about was my money and my fame. Even my girlfriend didn't care enough to help me. Fine. Huh? That's it! <gasps> What's wrong with him? Is he crazy? Uh, Siri! What? We're over. Oh! <laughs> what you gonna do about that, Siri? Damn, he just dumped you in front of everyone. But Marlo... You don't care about me. You only care about yourself. I realize that now. I turned to the waiter and helped him to his feet. I'm sorry I yelled at you before. Uh, that's okay. Siri, goodbye and good riddance. And I turned and left Siri gaping back at me like a dumb fish. Man, that felt good. The next day at school, the whole class was whispering about my scandal with Siri. How I had humiliated her. Yeah, she's hot, but she's also a stuck-up jerk. But I didn't say it out loud. It would just bring more attention to myself, which was the last thing I wanted right now. May Marlo please go to the principal's office now? Your mother is here. It's an emergency. Emergency? I shot to my feet and rushed to the principal's office as fast as I could. Was she sick? Did something happen? Was it grandma? I arrived breathlessly. Mom! <sighs> what happened? Wow, you got here quick. Come, honey, sit down. It's about Siri. Siri? I heard you broke up with her. Yeah? And? Why would you do that? Her father owns one of the biggest car companies in Italy. She was a very good connection for my business. You have to get back with Siri or you'll lose us millions. But mom, Siri is vile. I don't want to date her. Stop whining and suck it up. Sometimes we have to make sacrifices, you know? I 
can't believe you right now. Seriously, now my own mother was turning against me. Suddenly I heard a loud whirring noise. Kids were running past me and heading outside, and I followed them to find a helicopter landing in our soccer field. Do you think it's the president? No way, it's probably an alien. I pushed to the front of the crowd and groaned when I saw who was stepping off the helicopter. It was Siri. Sorry I'm late to school today. I had to get something for my best boy. Siri raised her arms and suddenly fireworks erupted from the skies with the words, I love you, Marlo. Aw, she's so sweet. What'd I do to get her to date me? Ugh, Siri, stop this. Come on, Marlo. You know you want me back. Just admit it. Siri, I will never date you again. I can't believe I actually liked you before. Marlo, don't do something you'll regret. I know your mom is trying to work a deal with my father. Is that a threat? I knew you were low, but this is a whole nother level, Siri. Marlo, don't. Goodbye. Again. I turned and headed back into the school building. Everyone was shocked by my behavior. I bumped into mom on the way in. Marlo, don't tell me you just... I won't ever date her. Ever. Not to save my life. Marlo! I called my driver and he soon arrived, and I got him to drive me home. On the way home, I realized I wanted to get some ice cream so I could treat myself and watch some storytime animated videos later in my room. So I asked my driver to stop at the grocery store. We headed inside and I was picking out ice cream flavors when suddenly I felt someone appear behind me. How dare you treat King Siri that way? What did you say? You humiliated Siri in front of everyone. You'll pay for that. Who was this boy? Some kind of weird fan of Siri's? But before I could say anything more, the boy pounced on me and started pulling out my hair. Get off me! My driver managed to pull him away, but the boy slipped from his grip and disappeared into the night. Later, when we finally arrived at home, my driver told mom about the ordeal. What? That's it. I'm getting you a bodyguard. No. Mom, don't. I can look after myself. I thought Mom would respect my wishes, but as usual, she didn't. That weekend, Mom was hosting another party, and I was forced to attend since it was at our mansion. I sat alone waiting for the party to end, when yet again another waiter tripped right in front of me, and this time he was holding a bowl of fish stew. I could see exactly what would happen. I would be drenched, and nobody would care to help me, because I had no real friends. But suddenly, as the stew was about to soak me, someone leaped forward and acted as my shield. Oh my god, are you okay? The girl turned to face me and I felt my knees walk. This girl was stunning. Yeah, I'm fine. Wow, uh, thank you. If you want, I can help you get cleaned up. No, it's okay. Are you sure? Really, I don't mind- I said no, dude. Please, just let me do my job. Her job? Marlo? Oh, I see you've met Leah. Who is this? Your bodyguard. What? But mom, I told you. I know, I know, but I'm your mother and I think you're in danger and I want to make sure you're safe. Leah will be by your side 24-7. So why don't you two get to know each other a little? Psst. I also made sure to hire a pretty girl, you know, to help you out. Ugh, mom. There's no need for us to get to know each other, Mr. Piazza. My job is solely to protect you. <laughs> you could be a little nicer, you know. And how would that help? What? It's just nice to be nice. I don't see the purpose. Who was this girl? The Terminator? Mom, there's no way I can be with this girl 24-7. <clears throat> You're one to talk. What was that? You two will just have to get along because I can't be bothered looking for another bodyguard. I trust Leah, and she will protect you. But... No more buts. It's final. Ugh... Mom left, leaving me with Miss Smarty Pants. I don't need your help, you know. Clearly. <laughs> the next day at school was horrible, obviously. Leia followed me everywhere. As we walked through the hallways, all the boys were staring at her. Why does Marlo always get the supermodel girlfriends? It's cause he's rich. <sighs> Couldn't these guys see I didn't want hot girls in my life? Especially not someone like Leia. She hadn't spoken a word to me all day. All she did was stand silently beside me. It was creepy. On the way to the class, I stopped by the boys' bathroom. Uh, uh, you are not coming in here. 
But... Don't worry. No one's gonna assassinate me in the bathroom. I shut the door on her and stood in front of the mirror. Finally, some privacy. A toilet flushed in one of the stalls behind me and a boy in blue hair emerged. Wait a second. I'd seen that blue hair before. <gasps> it's you. <laughs> Hello, Marlo. What do you want? You have to get back together with Siri. Are you insane? Why are you doing this? Because you and Siri were the best couple ever. I lived for you two. And if you don't get back together with her, then you'll have to answer to this. Ah! The boy lunged at me, but suddenly a shoe came flying out of nowhere and knocked him out. What the flying fish? I told you I should have come in with you. Leia. What was that about not needing me again? Yeah, yeah, whatever. We exited the bathroom with Leia carrying the boy in her arms. I just got off the phone with the police when we bumped into Siri. Marlo, baby, and uh, who is this? Siri, please move aside. Suddenly the boy woke up and when he spotted Siri, he reached for her and hugged her. Please help me. Help you? Marlo, what's going on? He just tried to attack me with a knife. You seriously expect me to believe that? Are you calling Marlo a liar? Who are you? Uh, Siri, this is my new bodyguard. Bodyguard? Aren't you a little young for that? Aren't you a little old to be acting like a toddler? What did you just call me? Guys, chill out. The police will be here soon. Can you please just hold off killing each other until then? Eventually, the police arrived, and they issued a restraining order against the boy, who we learned was called Jesse. As they took him away, he brushed past me. Good luck sleeping tonight. Jesse smirked and let the police drag him out. I have to admit, I was terrified. That night before I went to bed, I turned to Leia, who was standing outside my bedroom door. Leia, earlier today, why did you get so mad at Siri? Because... <clears throat> it's my duty as your bodyguard to protect you. Really? Is that all it was? I... I think so. We remained quiet, but after some time I leaned forward and hugged her. Thank you for being there for me. I could feel her tense up, but eventually she relaxed and hugged me back. Of course. Leia, I have to tell you something. But in a flash, Leia pulled away from me and backed off. Marlo, I'm your bodyguard. Remember that. Nothing more. I blushed. You're right. Uh, I'm sorry. Leia waited in the hallway, and I went to bed, although I felt a little sad. Soon, I managed to get to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I was surprised to find Leia gone. Had she left me alone in the night? It didn't sound like something she would do. But then when I got up, I noticed something outside on the floor of the hallway that rattled my bones. I have Leia. If you want her back alive, then you shall get back together with Siri. Don't call the police. I'll know if you do. Come to this meeting place so we can seal the deal. Then there was an address and time. I was distraught, not Leia. Sure, she was quiet, mildly annoying, but she had been there for me when no one else would. I had to save her. Later that night, I arrived at the location beside the old abandoned warehouse. I waited for some time. Then suddenly from the warehouse emerged Jesse, dragging a tied up Leia beside him. Good, you came. Let her go, Jesse. Only if you swear you'll get back together with Siri. If you go back on our deal and break up with her again, then I'll ruin your life. Man, this dude was insane. <clears throat> Marlo, don't do it. I can't let you get hurt. It's not worth it. What's it going to be, Marlo? Your freedom or saving poor sweet Leia? I looked at her concerned face and I knew what I had to do. Fine. I'll date Siri. Aha, yes! No, Marlo! Jesse started to back away. Remember, you break our deal and you'll regret it. I know. He disappeared, and I rushed to Leia and started untying her. Marlo, you shouldn't have done that. I was fine. Oh, really? Marlo, I can't bear seeing you with Siri. Why do you care? Thought you were just my bodyguard and nothing else. <sighs> I... You're right. Forgive me, I failed to protect you. Yeah, it's fine, Leia. Come on, let's go home. I won't tell Mom about this. She'll freaking call the cops or something. The next day, Leia and I pulled up at Siri's mansion. I knocked on the door and Siri herself answered. Marlo, so nice to see you. 
Oh, I see you brought your annoying friend. Leia clenched her fist, but I put a hand on hers to calm her down. Siri, I've come to say I'm sorry. Took you long enough. I forced a smile. Let's get back together. <laughs> I knew you'd come crawling back eventually. How could you resist Queen Siri after all? <laughs> While she laughed her butt off at her own stupid joke, I started to imagine what my terrible future would look like. We'd probably end up getting married, have three children who were spoiled rotten just like Siri. Siri would probably end up cheating on me and she'd win the divorce trials and probably all the money. I'd end up homeless and begging on the streets. But suddenly I felt Leia move beside me and she punched Siri right in her slimy face. Leia! <gasps> you peasant! You'll pay for that! Siri lunged at Leia and they rolled on the ground like a bunch of lion cubs. Stop it! While they struggled, Siri's phone fell out of her pocket and I noticed some messages on it. Curious. I picked up her phone and I was shocked to see that she had been chatting with our old pal Jesse. Okay, yeah. Grab Leah and we'll use her as ransom. Marla will have no choice but to date me now. Sure thing, boss. Just make sure you wire me that money, okay? Yes, yes, you got it. I couldn't believe it. Siri had hired Jesse to do all those horrible things. Leia, stop. They rolled to a stop with Leia pinning Siri to the ground. Yes? Call the police. Siri, playtime's over. What are you talking about? I showed her the messages with Jesse. Oh, um, oops. Ah, <sighs> you're a snake. You know that? A few minutes later, the cops were piled in her mansion, and Siri was arrested for all her misdeeds. With these messages, we'll be able to find Jesse soon, too. Thank you, officers. Marlo, please, come on, you know you love me. You're a jerk, Siri, and I never want to see you again. What? <laughs> While she cried away, the police took her to the station. Leia and I watched them leave. You should be happy now. Why? You don't have to be my bodyguard anymore. The danger's gone. Leia hesitated and then grabbed my hand. I want to stay. Really? Why? Because I've tried to ignore my feelings, but I can't deny them any longer. I like you, Marlo. <gasps> I, uh, I like you too. I took her in my arms and we kissed. I was over the moon. Hi, Mom! As I leaned over to kiss Mom, you wouldn't believe what happened. The cover of my milkshake fell off, and the milkshake splattered on the white dress. Suddenly, a blood-curdling screech filled the room. Oh, what did you do to my dress? I paid $5,000 for this dress. You better hope this stain comes out, doofus. Don't you dare talk to my mother that way, you spoiled brat! I'll talk to your mother however I choose. With my fists clenched, I stepped towards Debbie. What is going on here? They ruined my dress for tonight! Daddy, fire her! Mr. Langston looked at the dress that Mom held in her hand, then at the milkshake in mine. Mr. Langston, I can ex- Mrs. Pierce, I think it's time you left. Mom nodded, and without another word, she exited the room, and I followed closely on her heels. Hi, my name is Kylie, and I'm from Costa Rica. Please like and subscribe to our amazing channel. I grew up with a single mom who worked as a maid at the Langston Mansion for over 10 years. Now, thanks to me, mom was fired. I apologized to mom a million times, and each time she said it wasn't my fault, but I knew she was just saying that so I wouldn't feel bad. Mom now worked multiple jobs, which meant she was hardly ever home. I insisted that I'd get a job to help her pay the bills, but mom wasn't having it. Kylie, we spoke about this already. I want you to focus on school. Let me worry about the bills. I decided I would study my butt off to make my mom proud. A few months later, I was super excited when I got a scholarship to college. I can't believe we got into the same college. My best friend Heidi squealed into the phone. 
Heidi and I met on the playground in kindergarten, and we've been friends ever since. College will be amazing! We can change our boring high school personalities and spice things up a bit. Now is the time for a change. New school, new me. The night before college, I was so excited that I barely slept. On the first day, as soon as Heidi and I stepped onto the campus, I got a shocker. <laughs> Surrounded by a group of girls, stood Debbie, soaking up the attention. I groaned. Over 60 colleges to attend, and you and Debbie choose the same one? This can't be happening! As Heidi and I walked past, Debbie shouted, Hey, Nate's daughter, I didn't expect to see you at college. I thought you'd be with your mom, carrying on the family business, being a peasant. I'm surprised to see you here too, Debbie. We all know you didn't get the grade to attend this college, and Daddy paid extra for you to get in. I smirked as I walked past, and Heidi couldn't <laughs> control her laughter, which got her a cold stare from Debbie. The first few days of college were okay. Every time Debbie saw me, she made a snide remark, but I retorted to keep things even between us. However, after the first week, something happened that unhinged my very soul. As Heidi and I sat in the cafeteria devouring our lunch, someone walked into the cafeteria and I cringed. Is that mom? She wore a janitor's uniform and pushed a bucket and mop in front of her. This couldn't be happening. How was I going to be a new person with mom hanging around the school in a janitor's uniform? College was supposed to be a fresh start for me. Maid's daughter, is it bring your mother to work day? Debbie pushed her lunch tray off the table, then placed her hand over her mouth. Oopsies. Anger boiled in me as I watched mom clean up Debbie's mess while her friends <laughs> laughed. I walked over to Debbie and grabbed a fistful of her clothing in my hand. Kylie, let her go now. But mom, she... Kylie. I let go of Debbie's clothing and I walked away and didn't look back. I vowed that one day I'd make Debbie pay. Who did she think she was? I decided to go to the campus library to get some studying done. At least that was one place I knew Debbie didn't plan on visiting. Hi. I looked up and my eyes fell on the cutest guy I'd ever seen. I saw what happened back there. Uh... Debbie sucks. Thanks. Debbie can be so cruel sometimes. It's infuriating. Are you a freshman? No, I'm a junior. My name's Justin. Nice to meet you, Justin. I'm Kylie. Over the next 30 minutes, I sat there glossy-eyed, soaking in every word that Justin said. We loved the same movies, and we both have an obsession with fine art. Hey, maybe I can take you to the art gallery sometime? I'd love that. But until then... I'd love it if you came to my birthday party this weekend. I'll send a car over for you. Can I bring my best friend, Heidi? Sure. The more the merrier. I've got a class, so I gotta run. Later. I smiled and waved to Justin as he walked away. I couldn't believe that Heidi and I just got invited to our first college party! Mm -hmm. On the night of the party, Heidi got dressed at my house. The doorbell rang and I answered it. Good evening, love. I'm here to pick up Miss Kylie and Miss Heidi. A personal driver? Justin must be rich. Heidi and I waved at mom as we exited the house. About 30 minutes later, the chauffeur spoke up. We have arrived. We were escorted to the back of the house where there was a pool and the party was in full swing. I scanned the crowd, spotted Justin, and gave him a little wave. My heart fluttered as he waved back and walked over. Hey, ladies. Kylie, I'm glad you can make it. Do you want to dance? Before I could accept, Debbie interrupted us. We hired the cleanup crew for after the party, not during janitor's daughter. Give it a rest, Debbie. My dearest brother, mingling with the help is not a good look for us. Brother! He didn't tell you. He didn't tell her because like everything else, you are irrelevant. And with that fire comeback, Heidi pushed Debbie into the pool. And the party fell silent for a few seconds. Justin was the first one to break the silence when he burst into laughter, which was immediately followed by that of his friends. Debbie got out of the pool and glared at us. Angrily, she pushed her way through the crowd and into the house. When she was out of sight, Justin offered his hand. Let's dance. Over the next two weeks, Justin and I got to know each other a lot better. 
One day during lunch, Justin asked me out on a date and I accepted. I couldn't believe it! Justin wanted to go out on a date with me! On the night of the date, we went to dinner, then to an art gallery before we took a stroll hand in hand under the moonlight by the beach. By the time he walked me to my door, it was close to midnight. I had a really great time tonight. So did I. Our eyes met, and Justin leaned closer to me. I closed my eyes and leaned forward nervously, anticipating his lips on mine. But the kiss never came. Not on my lips, anyway. Justin kissed me on the cheek. I'll see you tomorrow at school, okay? Too stunned to speak. I nodded and entered the house. I went straight to my room and called Heidi and told her about my date. Maybe he didn't want to take it too fast. I guess. I'm sure you'll get to the kiss you're longing for in no time. I hope so, because I really like him. Heidi and I chatted for over an hour before we said goodnight. I slipped into a peaceful sleep, totally unprepared for what the next day was about to bring. The next morning, I was excited to get to school to see Justin. I was about to turn the corner in the hallway when I heard Debbie and Justin speaking. What I heard made my heart bleed. Look, I played your silly game. Now pay me the money that you owe. <laughs> I can't believe you actually got her to go on a date with you. The girl was so desperate that she'd go on a date with anyone in her tacky thrift shop dress. Ugh, that date was the worst date I've ever had. I stepped out from behind the wall. So playing with someone's feelings is a joke to you? I slapped Justin across the face and Debbie gasped. You jerk! And you? Stay away from me! I stormed off and went to the girls' bathroom and had myself a good cry. That was the worst day of my life! But then, something happened that night that turned my mood around. I was completing some assignments when mom burst into my room. Kylie, I won the lottery. What? I won 10 million dollars. The next few days felt surreal. Mom resigned from work and decided to open her own company. Heidi and I went on a shopping spree and mom and I moved into a new neighborhood. She even bought me a new car. But even though I had money to buy anything I wanted, I actually still enjoyed going to thrift shops. One particular visit gave me the advantage that I was looking for over Debbie. Mom? I watched as Mrs. Langston searched through the clothes on the rack and held a few dresses against Debbie. My friends are getting suspicious I can't keep getting these cheap clothes and trying to pass them off as designer wear. Well, honey, your dad filed for bankruptcy and until we get back on our feet, these stores will be your new best friend. Mrs. Langston walked away, and Debbie stomped her feet frustratedly. I walked around the clothing rack, and Debbie's eyes widened like a frightened deer. She looked utterly mortified. I'll see you on Monday. As I approached my locker early Monday morning, Debbie was waiting, and she looked extremely nervous. Look, about what you saw on Saturday... Honestly, I'm surprised. You always strut around like some kind of princess, as if you're above <laughs> us all. I wonder what everyone will say when I tell them you're broke. Please, you can't. <laughs> I can and I will! Don't, I'll do anything. Good, I'm glad you said that. I dropped my books into Debbie's arms. From now on, you do every single thing I tell you. Got it? Over the next few days, I made Debbie my personal maid. She washed my car, did my laundry, and ironed all of my clothes. And did my chores at home, including cleaning my room. A few days later, as I was looking through some cute rings at the kiosk, Debbie groaned as she struggled to hold my shopping bags. Uh, are we done yet? You're done when I say we are. Or do you want me to tell everyone at school that you're broke? I heard a gasp from behind us and I spun around. There stood Debbie's friends, their mouths open in shock. You're broke? Debbie stepped toward them, but they turned up their noses at her and walked in the other direction. Debbie dropped my bags and ran away crying. Once I gathered my bags, I went in search of Debbie. I found her outside by the car park. Debbie, I'm sorry. Sorry? You found a chance to humiliate me and took it! Me! Maybe if you weren't such a witch when you had money, people may have treated you better when you lost it. And maybe if you didn't have any, you wouldn't be the witch that you are now. Debbie got up and walked away. 
as I sat there and contemplated her words. I felt terrible. I had turned into someone I no longer recognized. I was totally disappointed with myself. The following week, neither Justin nor Debbie was at school, and talk about them losing their money was the main gossip of the whole class. That afternoon, after giving it a lot of thought, I went to Mom for help. I told her everything. Mom sighed heavily. What you did to Debbie was wrong, but I'm glad that you realized that. And you're willing to help? I'll give Mr. Langston a call. Not only did Mom give Mr. Langston a call, but she invited the entire family over for dinner! Talk about awkward! Justin didn't look at me once during the dinner, and Debbie just sat there pushing her food around the plate. Mom told Mr. Langston that she had a position for him at her company, and he graciously accepted it. Thank you so much. You don't know how much this means to me. You didn't have to do this, especially after I fired you. I believe in helping people wherever I can. I'm just happy I'm able to help you and your family. After dinner, Debbie excused herself to go outside for some fresh air, and I followed her. Debbie, I'm sorry about what I did. I should have never treated you that way. Can you forgive me? Debbie did something I never thought she'd do. She hugged me! I was taken aback for a few seconds, but I returned her hug. I'm also sorry for how I treated you. I've always been jealous of the love that you and your mom share. I've never had that. With dad always away working and mom always trying to keep up appearances and with Justin being, well, Justin, nobody ever loved me for who I was, only for what I had. Well, now that you have nothing, I hope that you can get the friends that you need. <laughs> I hope so. Maybe we can hang out sometime? I'd like that.